Welcome to The Practice Podcast, a show created by lawyers to help lawyers in life and business without all the complicated lawyer language. Let's welcome Bast Amron founders and your hosts, Jeff Bast and Brett Amron. Hello, I'm Jeff Bast. This is Brett Amron. Welcome to The Practice Podcast. And today we are going to talk about referral sources and really how to stay top of mind on referral sources. And Brett, what is, uh, for the benefit of our listeners out there, what is a referral source? Well, it's how you get business. Our law firm, and I know a lot of other law firms like us, the majority of our business comes from referrals from other lawyers, from former or current clients and other sources. And some are lawyers that don't practice in the areas we practice in, and some are in the practice areas we practice in. So you've got to cultivate those relationships and build it over time. As we tell the young lawyers here, it's not, hey, let's uh, let's get coffee and then you're going to get a client matter. I mean, it's relationships, it's credibility, it's trust. They have to know the lawyer that they're sending their client or their friend or their neighbor to is somebody who's going to reflect well on them and do a good job. Yeah. So that's an important point. So how do you find referral sources in the beginning? Referrals tend to be, I think last time I checked at some point, 90% of our clients came from other lawyers. It's lawyers that you know, lawyers that you've built relationships over the years, lawyers that you went to law school with. That's why we always encourage the young lawyers to maintain their contacts. When we're referring a case out, we want to one, make sure the person's competent two, make sure it's someone we like, and three, hope that maybe they'll refer something back to us at some point in the future. But the first two are, to me, by far and away the best. It's somebody who can handle the client and you can trust. Yeah. I mean, it reflects poorly on us if we refer somebody out to another lawyer and they do a terrible job. That doesn't reflect well on us. And so we have a network right, that we've cultivated over the years, individually and together as a firm, of people that we feel comfortable sending work to. And and that's either law school, friends, lawyers we've met along the way in different cases, both on the same side and even on the opposite side. And there's opportunities yeah. everywhere, right? Yeah. To me, I mean, we've had that many times over the years. That's one of the greatest compliments is when your opposing counsel refers a matter to you directly. It's usually after the <laughs> after the, yes. the your opposing counsel much later in life. But if you show someone that you do a good job, you're a decent person, then they're going to be more inclined to refer business to you. And the other thing is, I think a lot of people receive referrals and they don't so much as acknowledge it, which is such a simple thing. I mean, how many times have we referred a client to somebody, to a lawyer? And they don't even send us a note, nothing. nothing. Not, not, don't even acknowledge, hey, thanks. That's such a simple... Yeah. I was just telling you the other day, I got an email from a lawyer out of state that said, hey, I'm looking for this kind of lawyer down there. Do you know anyone? And I sent them off and took me two minutes, mm-hmm. right? I sent off an email with a lawyer. I said, you know, good luck. Let me know. I got a thank you from that lawyer out of state who asked for it and made contact. And then I got a phone call from the lawyer who I referred it to saying, I just wanted to say, thanks. How you doing? How's everything? I hadn't talked to that lawyer in a, long, in a while. That's just a little thing that can go a really long way. It's so simple. I've also received handwritten notes. Yep. You mentioned this to me. You have as well. I've received handwritten notes from another lawyer saying, hey, I really appreciate the business. And to me, that's somebody who's acknowledging it mm-hmm. and appreciating it. And that's really all you want, obviously, besides providing good service to your client. Yeah. And when you're communicating with people, obviously, you want to tell them as you're building relationships, you want to tell them what you do, but you also want to know what they do. Yeah. You should ask them, tell me what you do and what can I look for? How can you know? I help you? Right. Yeah. That's networking 101. When you meet another lawyer for coffee or lunch yeah. or you're at a chamber event, what do you look for? Who are you looking to meet? How can I help you? You know, how can I make an introduction for you? It's such an easy ask. But I think acknowledging referral source is really important. The other thing we like to do is at the conclusion of the matter, let that lawyer know, hey, I just wanted you to know we had this recently. We won a trial. It was a mm-hmm. Zoom trial. I let the lawyer that referred it to me know, hey, I wanted you to know that you know we took that case to trial and won it. And so they were super happy. And then they could call. That's an excuse for them to call their client and contact them. The other thing that we're super sensitive to here is respect for the referral. When a lawyer refers a client to us and then that client asks us for something else, we're always going to say, hey, you should go back to the original lawyer. That that person does it. If they do it, of course, if they do it. And I think a lot of people are reluctant to refer clients to some firms because they're afraid to lose the client. They'll never see that client again. And that happens. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the respect is an important thing, isn't it? 
And even if it's something that the client insists, at minimum, you got to pick up the phone and call your referral source and say, at least we do, and say, look, the client called me and I wanted to call you and let you know, and I respect the relationship and and have that dialogue and open communication because that's a relationship that you have to cultivate. Not just the client relationship, which is obviously very, very important, but it's the colleagues, it's the referral sources, it's the relationships that you're creating over time that really is super helpful and is going to sustain you and your business. Whenever possible, I'll even try to keep that lawyer involved. If a foreclosure defense lawyer calls us because they're going to lose and they want to you know, start exploring bankruptcy options, we'll say, look, we're going to come in, but we want to work you know, with this lawyer if mm-hmm. we can, if it's appropriate. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes you need to step in and replace them or whatever it is. But if there's an opportunity to bring that referring lawyer into the fold, mm-hmm. you know, we're always going to try to do that. The other thing is gifts or referral fees. I know a lot of practices pay referral fees. We don't, not really common in bankruptcy. Not on the commercial side, mostly no, but it, that's where you can create the network. Obviously, what you said at the beginning, that it starts with being really good at what you do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's sort of the baseline. Yeah. But it's also, and we've been bitten by the, some of it is political sometimes when a referral is being made. Sometimes it's political and sometimes it's, it is solid relationships, even though maybe you're right. a perfect fit for something or whatever it is and it's relationship-based and you lose out because there's maybe tighter relationships or something else going on. So yeah. as I said, you've got to do like a really good job and hope that helps with the relationship, right? And that you're going to get more of that work going yeah. forward. And there's opportunities, as you said, in the matter that you're working on. There's opportunities in court when you're there, eventually when we go back or even on Zoom, you know, and there's all those opportunities to create those relationships. Reach out to opposing counsel. I mean, I do it in all my cases. Sometimes you have better relationships than others with opposing counsel in cases, but that's super important. And the one thing I know that we take pride in, not so many lawyers unfortunately do, but I don't feel like I need to badmouth another lawyer to my client. Right. And treating people with respect. Treat them with respect. Listen, they're a lawyer. Maybe they're not quite up to par. Maybe there's another lawyer that I think you can, you should go to or whatever it is. But if someone calls me and says, Hey, I got referred to this lawyer. What do you think? I'm going to say, well, maybe they're not the best fit for you. If I feel that way, right? If you feel the need to badmouth another lawyer, then maybe that reflects more on you than... Right. Than the other lawyer. Yeah, and if you're petty, you're not. You're, you right. know, if you uh, won't extend basic courtesies, extensions of time, yeah. you know, things like that, accommodations, you're definitely not getting business. Not that you should be thinking about getting business from your opposing counsel, but everything you do reflects upon you and your business, and that's how you build yeah. a book by being, you know, by establishing a reputation. The other thing, I, you know, it's which is kind of a basic one. The best way to thank a referral source is a referral. If a client refers you, a real estate lawyer refers us a case, we're going to try to refer one back to them. Yeah. It's just basics. Sometimes it'll take years before we get that opportunity. It depends. But as long as you maintain a list and you keep people on your list and you recognize, hey, they sent us something we should really try. In the meantime, until we get to that point, we have our cookies. We send people cookies. They get a few times a year. Well, the cookies are a thank you, but it's also obviously stay top of mind. Sometimes we get those emails from people, you know, hey, I got the cookies. Thank you so much, you know, or right. thanks for keeping my weight on. Yeah, exactly. Whatever, whatever usually, it is. People are usually complaining <laughs> that, hey, why are you making this? Right, uh, right. But, cookies. you know, it's a little gesture on our part just to let them know that we're thinking of them as well and thanking them for, you know, the relationship that we have. I talked to a lawyer the other day who gets a really nice bottle of wine and has his firm logo etched into the glass and sends that to clients. That's nice. There's a lot of different ways to just stay on people's minds. But mm-hmm. uh, to me, I think what lawyers appreciate most is communication and referral back. Right. If you have that opportunity, right? That's part of creating that network of people that you know you surround yourself with that obviously again goes back to the quality of the lawyer but also the quality of the person and you, know, you feel comfortable sending work to that person to that lawyer to a financial professional to right. a mediator to i mean there's there's right. so many different levels in what we do it's not just lawyers right, right. the relationships are super important it's got to be cultivated over time the other thing it takes I, a long time the other thing i was thinking of um is just being responsive. Because how many times have you made an email introduction to a potential client who's looking for a lawyer or whatever, and that lawyer just doesn't respond? Days pass and the referral says, hey, I never really heard from someone. I mean, that really reflects... I think we think that it reflects poorly on us. I don't think people say, oh, Jeff sent me to someone who didn't respond. 
but I'm definitely going to think twice about sending that person yeah. something the next time if they're not responsive. I get if they're on vacation or whatever, if they're in trial, something like that. But when you just don't respond to an introduction. Well, a, that, again, that's, that's sort of creating that network where you feel comfortable sending it because the lawyer that you're sending or the professional that you're sending a client to or a fellow lawyer or whatever it is, is going to act in the same manner that or similar manner that you would. Right. That's true. And so they're responsive, right? We would never ignore it. We would never ignore that. Even if we're on a vacation or, you know, I mean, we're not going to ignore it. We may say, hey, we're out, we're in trial or we're tied up. Can I have somebody else get back to you or can this wait a day or two or whatever it is? But there's a response. We would do that. And so if we refer something out to somebody and they don't do that, well, then obviously maybe that wasn't the best choice. Right. I think this topic comes up a lot. People ask, how do you get referrals? But also, how do you stay top of mind on referral sources? And I think there's there's a lot to it. It's building the relationships from the beginning, being really good at what you do, being responsive, being professional and courteous, recognizing the referral, respecting the referral sources, and showing some gratitude. I think the showing the gratitude is can't be underestimated. In every aspect of life, Mr. Bass. In every aspect. And I am grateful for you, Mr. Amron. No, no, I am grateful and for grateful you. for Nelson. Nelson Rosado, thank you, sir, for being our production man. Thank you for listening to the Practice Podcast. For more information on this show and other resources, visit fastamron.com and connect with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram at Fast Amron. 